Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese and welcome to this episode of the Ellison Education video series. Today we're focusing on folded techniques that begin with a single square sheet of paper. Now the folding is the same, but the placement of the folded paper against the die blades, it results in two different wreath styles of openings. So if, to show you what I mean, if you look at this first example, this is an apple wreath and the inside section is roughly a circle. So this is what we call the wreath fold with the circle opening and this is done with one single cut in the machine but with paper that's been folded and let me show you how you begin to do this you start with a square this happens to be a nine inch square it will it will vary based on the size of the shape you're going to cut and you you begin by folding it in half on the diagonal and then you keep it folded and you're going to fold it in half again and you keep those folded and you fold it in half again so you end up with this shape. Now you need to find what would be the middle. So if I open this up, this, this point right here is actually going to be the middle of my paper. So as it's all folded, this middle section is going to face down on the design. Here is the apple die that I'm going to use in small. And to make a circular opening, I need for my paper to have the point be roughly in the middle of my design and it's important that once it's all folded that there is a little bit of blade exposed. If I do this and show you how I'm covering this over, you need for some blade to be exposed on both sides, otherwise it's just going to cut out all these individual apples and you want them to stay connected. So you need to render a few of these blades ineffective. So once you have it placed how you want it on the block, then you're going to bring it over and I'm going to be cutting it in the Big Shot Pro. So I'm going to place, I'm going to place it, you see I was just cutting something blue. I'm going to place it with the cutting pad over the top and I have the rubber and the blade side sitting up. I'm going to slide it and then I'm going to just go ahead and run it through the machine and I'll leave everything else over here and I'll just bring over. When you open this back up now, you'll see how this was used to create this wreath with this circular style of opening. The only other thing that I did to this, you can see it's just the same, was that I went back with some green polka dot paper and I just cut out the stem and the leaf so that I could add just a little bit more decoration to this finished wreath. But you know, I, I'm a little bit dismayed. I'm gonna bring this over and show you because this is actually kind of cool. I have a brand new die that I had on the table that I was going to cut this with. This is the die out of the art department. This die is like at least 30 years old. We have used this for hundreds, I mean thousands, uh, tens upon thousands of cuts. It has been sitting in the art room and we've used it, we've taken it to trade shows, we've used it to cut all the parts and pieces for hundreds of workshops that we've given. And I get asked all the time, do we have to sharpen the blades? No. All that you need to do is to replace periodically the cutting pad because that's what the blade is cutting into. The blades do not need sharpening and this die has been here longer than me. Now that's looking at cutting the wreath style of opening that has the circle. I'll bring up another example. Here, if I started with a larger piece of paper and a large apple, you can see how it creates a larger style wreath. You're going to want to play with this because it's so much fun to fold the paper and see what you get when you put it back in and you fold it. The second example is what we call the wreath cut, but this one has roughly a square opening. Now this is the dinosaur from the basic beginnings, and this is when I started with a piece of paper that was 12 inch square. That's how I got this size. Here, just to see what the difference might be, here is what I got when I started with a piece of 11 inch square paper. And if I set this over the top, hopefully you can see just the slight difference. It cuts it basically the same, but just with a smaller sized, you know, opening. And the wreath itself is a little bit smaller. Now, let me bring this up and show you. Now here is the basic beginning dinosaur. And if I flip it over, you can see this is the same, the paper is still folded exactly the same way. This is the middle, just like we showed before. The middle also, it needs to be facing the bottom. However, to get that square opening, instead of the, the point being in the middle of your design, you need it to be a 90 degree angle 
from your design because this is what's going to create that square opening. I want to make sure that my paper is covering where his head is over here. And when I have that sufficiently covered, then this is going to create a 90 degree angle from the shape, the, the design itself. And I'm going to run it back through once again. I'm going to put it with the die blade up and I'm going to put the cutting pad over the top and then I'm just going to roll it through and I'm cutting through, gosh, how many thicknesses would that be? If I'm, when I, I'll bring that over here, I'll leave everything else and bring it over and open it up. This is just, I have to tell you, once you start doing this, you're going to start, you know, folding and cutting all kinds of things just to see what it results in when you actually put it in the machine and start cutting. It's so cool. Whenever you're in the need of a frame of any type, you might want to consider the folded wreath techniques. The results, they're wonderful and all with only one cut.